Welcome to this quick guide on possible side effects after a CAR-T infusion. We'll cover side effects to watch for during the first four to eight weeks after CAR-T infusion and beyond, responsibilities for caregivers, when to call the CAR-T medical team or 911, and some key resources that are available. Every patient has a unique CAR-T treatment journey and may encounter different side effects. Ask your care team to tell you what's common for your type of cancer and your CAR-T drug type. Depending on the CAR-T treatment center and the specific CAR-T drug, patients receive their CAR-T infusion as either an inpatient or an outpatient. If getting the infusion as an inpatient, plan to stay in the hospital for at least the first week afterwards so the care team can watch for possible side effects. If you have any side effects, you may have to stay longer. After being released from the hospital, you and your caregiver will need to stay within 30 to 60 minutes of the CAR-T treatment center for at least four weeks after the CAR-T infusion. A caregiver or a team of caregivers will need to be with you full-time during the first month after your CAR-T infusion. If receiving the CAR-T infusion as an outpatient treatment, you can leave the treatment center but must stay within 30 to 60 minutes away from the treatment center for at least four weeks after infusion. A caregiver or a team of caregivers will need to be with you full-time during the first month after your CAR-T infusion. Eight weeks after the CAR-T infusion, you and your CAR-T medical team will decide if you are ready to resume some normal activities, like driving. Side effects, whether severe or mild, do not mean that CAR-T treatment is working or not working. The important thing is to immediately recognize and tell the CAR-T medical team about any side effects so they can be managed quickly. Yeah, I basically slept quite a bit through it, most of it, if not all of it. Um, I would wake up enough to shower and eat, and then I'd go back to sleep. And that was pretty much what I did. I was still able to answer my question to write my sentence. Um, there was a point where I, I write cursive, and so there was a point where I physically could not do cursive anymore, so I went to print. And then after print, I could not, my brain knew it wanted to write my sentence, but my hand couldn't do it. it so that was some of the, neuro, that was the extent of the neurological side of it. I physically could not write. And then that slowly started to go away, and I went from not being able to write to writing print and then write back to cursive again. Caregivers for a CAR-T patient are handed a lot of responsibility. They must be on duty 24 hours per day, seven days a week for those first four weeks after CAR-T infusion. Caregivers must live with the patient and stay close to the CAR-T treatment center and be ready to act fast if there's a problem. I think my wife, based on what they told me, she had one of the really severe reactions to the treatment because Frankly, I was afraid I was losing my wife. And I asked Dr. Reagan on a couple of occasions, am I losing my wife? And he said, no, we don't think so. I asked him, what do you mean you don't think so? He said, well, we're in kind of uncharted territory here. Potentially serious side effects are common with CAR-T. The first serious side effect you should be aware of is cytokine release syndrome, or CRS. CRS can happen with immunotherapy, causing a wide range of symptoms. It often starts with a high fever, but it can become life-threatening if it's not treated quickly. Because CAR T cells start working with your immune system right away, it can make the immune system push too hard. When this happens, molecules called cytokines are released. Cytokine release syndrome causes common symptoms such as high fever, fatigue, or muscle aches and pains. These are some of the first clues that CRS is happening. It's also possible to experience low blood pressure, dizziness, difficulty breathing, less urine than normal, body chills, night sweats, liver function problems, or blood clots. A second potential serious side effect of CAR-T can be neurological toxicity, also known as neurotoxicity. While it may happen on its own, it often follows the first signs of CRS, usually within the first 24 to 48 hours. It's not completely understood why neurotoxicity happens, 
but it is probably caused by cytokines and other factors in the immune system affecting the brain and central nervous system. This can lead to confusion and abnormal behavior. This can be frightening, especially for the caregiver. Some patients don't know how sick they are or that they're acting abnormally. Caregivers are more likely to be the first ones to notice these symptoms. Patients may be unaware of their symptoms. My husband was there, apparently. Um, people were asking me questions. I couldn't answer them. Um, not even, what is your name? Although, apparently I remembered his name, <laughs> my husband's name. But other, other than that, I really couldn't even answer questions. And I don't remember a thing about that day. I'm told that I had um, some very serious symptoms, um, fever, um, effects on just about all my organs. They were concerned that I might have had a heart attack, although it was ultimately determined that I didn't. But there were a lot of side effects, none of which I can really uh, describe to you because I was so out of it that day. Symptoms of neurotoxicity include anxiety, sleepiness, confusion, difficulty walking, facial droop, hallucinations, problems finding words, seizures, infection, headache, or being unresponsive or in a coma. If CRS and neurotoxicity occur, they can begin as early as hours after the CAR-T cell infusion. It usually takes a few days for symptoms to develop, though. The risk is usually lower after three weeks. Symptoms of CRS and neurotoxicity often last three to four days. Regular emergency rooms may not be prepared to treat these symptoms. That's why most CAR-T treatment centers ask you to stay close, within 30 to 60 minutes, for at least four weeks after the infusion. Your CAR-T team may advise you not to use over-the-counter medications like Tylenol or Advil because they can lower your temperature and might make it harder for your doctor to know if you have an infection. If you have these symptoms, call your treatment team and they can decide to use these. If you're hospitalized, you may be offered a medicine like tocilizumab, Actemra, or they may prescribe a steroid to prevent the cytokines from hurting the heart, kidneys, liver, or lungs. Some people with low blood counts may receive blood transfusions. Others may need time in the intensive care unit, or ICU. After two nights of CRS, Robin's fever went down. At that time, they really didn't want to give her anything, uh, Tylenol, Advil, to, to hold the fever down because uh, they didn't want to interfere with the process. Um, so she ran the course with the fever. You know, they were ready to do more if they needed to, and it turns out they didn't need to. Um, um, and the staff was great, and Robin recovered, and, and so we went back to our apartment. And, uh, and Robin was a nut about walking. She, she rested a lot, slept a lot, and I would go out and get dinner and bring it back. And, and, um, uh, but we were out walking and walking to lunch and, and, uh, I think her, um, focus on being healthy and getting exercised and getting those cells moving. And, and, uh, um, I think that was important, uh, part of her recovery. CRS and neurotoxicity can be very scary, but most of the time it does reverse with time. In rare cases, side effects could be long-lasting or lead to death. That's why it's important to learn what side effects to look for and how to best respond. You should also be aware of tumor lysis syndrome, or TLS. Although it's a less common side effect, TLS is when cancer cells break down quickly and cause your kidneys to work harder than normal. If your kidneys can't remove these waste products from your blood, you can feel tired or weak, confused, nauseous, crampy, tingling around the mouth, hands, or feet, or heart flutter. Seizures are also possible. TLS can happen within a few hours to several days after the CAR-T infusion. 
your CAR-T medical team may prescribe fluids, medicines, or maybe dialysis. Another common side effect is prolonged low blood counts, or cytopenias. This is common in the first few weeks due to the effects of conditioning or lymphodepleting chemotherapy. However, you may have this for a longer period of time, which would become more obvious in the first four to eight weeks after infusion. Developing cytopenia increases your risk of infection. You may need occasional blood or platelet transfusions. A longer-term side effect to watch for is B-cell aplasia. This is a potential side effect only for those with B-cell cancers. B-cell aplasia occurs when the CAR-T treatment attacks normal, healthy B-cells as well as the unhealthy cancerous B-cells. This makes it harder for your body to fight viruses and infection. It may develop within the first eight weeks after CAR-T infusion, and it can last for months or more. To treat B-cell aplasia, you may need an immunoglobulin infusion. You may hear it called IVIG. This provides antibodies that your body is not producing on its own so that it can fight infections. So which side effects require a call to your CAR-T care team and which to 911? In general, the CAR-T medical care team should be called right away if the patient has a temperature above 100.4 degrees, chills, confusion, dizziness, a fast or strange heartbeat, fatigue, tenderness, warmth or redness in the arm or leg, nausea and vomiting, no appetite for several days, mouth sores, constipation or diarrhea, bruises, bleeding, a feeling of pain when urinating, a cough that doesn't go away, or new pain or muscle aches. Call 911 right away if the patient has chest pain, shortness of breath, trouble breathing, a very bad headache that won't go away, trouble seeing, or severe bleeding. The 911 dispatcher should be told that the patient had a CAR-T infusion and be given the CAR-T treatment center's information. As caregiver, you may have to call 911 or get your loved one to the hospital, even if they don't think they want to. So she's like, well, let's let me lay down and let me see if it'll pass. Let me just give me a minute. Let me sleep. I, it, it, maybe it'll go away. And as a caregiver, you know that it's, it's not going to go away. You know it's, this is the beginning of a, a big process and something pretty dangerous. It can be pretty dangerous as far as all the cytokine release syndromes and the side effects. So um, just important to make that phone call, coax your loved one out of bed, <laughs> call the taxi or whatever transportation you need and get that person to the hospital where they could get the medical treatment. And the, the medical team are expecting you. So once again, just do not be afraid to make a phone call. As you can imagine, caring for someone who's had CAR-T therapy is a big responsibility. It's all-consuming, and it's not unusual for caregivers to feel overwhelmed, stressed, exhausted, and frightened. It is a good idea to keep a log of the CAR-T treatment journey. This can include appetite, meals, bladder, bowel movements, temperature, blood pressure, water intake, etc. This will let you track changes and share with the CAR-T medical team. Also, have a wallet card with contact information for you, the patient, and the CAR-T team in the event that you may need to go to a local emergency room. This way, your CAR-T medical team can be quickly contacted. As you may have heard, many patients report that they don't remember some of the severe side effects. Most of the stress, therefore, will fall on the caregiver. You may find keeping a journal may help you cope with your thoughts and feelings, find reasons for hope, and help heal throughout the CAR-T journey. It's important for caregivers to be prepared for the CAR-T process and to try to remain physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy. Know that this period of intense caregiving will end. Previous CAR-T caregivers offer some practical tips. For example, find time for yourself. When your loved one is in treatment or at an appointment, use that time to go on a walk, get fresh air, do something for yourself. Reach out to your social network, a caregiver's support system is their lifeline. Communicate with friends and family when you have a hard time. Ask for help with things like cooking, cleaning, childcare, and errands. 
Find ways to distract yourself. When you talk with others, even if they can't fully understand your experience, it can be therapeutic. Join a caregiver support group or online chat group. Ask for help finding one if you aren't aware of any. Talk with the CAR-T medical team and ask your questions. They will tell you what's going on and help you as well as the patient. In addition to these tips, it helps to learn what to expect before, during, and after the CAR-T treatment process. Knowledge is power. After the first eight weeks after CAR-T infusion, most side effects lessen or go away. Talk with your CAR-T medical team if you notice any side effects that last longer. It may take up to three months to learn if your CAR-T treatment was successful in putting you into remission. If it did, you may need antibiotics or IVIG therapy to prevent infection. Ask your doctor if you need to have any other treatments or therapies in the future. Because CAR-T is so new, doctors are still learning about long-term side effects. These tend to be less severe. They include things like runny nose with cough, phantom pains or vague pain where tumors and disease used to be, more infections or colds, stomach problems and a loss of appetite, difficulty concentrating and memory problems, persistently low blood counts. For more information, visit www.cancersupportcommunity.org slash CAR-T. Download the Cancer Support Community's Frankly Speaking About Cancer, CAR-T Patient and Caregiver Guide. Review it for questions to ask and things to know each step of the way. Also, consider important resources like the CAR-T Cancer Support Helpline, My Lifeline, the CAR-T Cell Patients and Carers Facebook group, and many more resources listed in Section 3 of the Frankly Speaking About Cancer CAR-T Guide. Now that you're armed with knowledge, you're better prepared for whatever lies ahead.